Hey guys, and welcome to a new server side patch, patch 14681. This patch is the result of a lot of uh, uh, feedback and a lot of ideas from both, uh, of course, the developers and a lot of feedback from community players, pro gamers, and so on from uh, the private council, the NDA council. So I already know the contents of this patch. But I'm very happy that we can show, share them with you guys today as the patch just went live May 16th, 2022. Devs had a lot of cool ideas and we're really excited to see what is coming. And yeah, I can already tell you I really like the contents of this patch. So let's jump into it. Mangonels now deal 50% more damage to ranged units. Attack radius has been increased from 0.75 to point. 875 radius the radius used to be 1.25 and it was reduced to 0 .7, uh, 0.75 and what that constituted was actually a 66 percent damage drop to the point where mangonels are barely used at all just a bit i think either one of these could have helped improve them enough or maybe 25% more damage to ranged units might have been enough. I'm a bit scared of this one because mangonel damage never did drop. It just dropped the radius and mangonels actually th shoot three rocks and those rocks are not going to the same exact place. And when the rocks overlap and hit the same thing, then it's essentially triple damage. And if two rocks hit you, then it's 66% of its maximum and what the radius drop before did is that it meant that oftentimes only one rock would hit any one unit whereas before three rocks would hit many units and that's why it's a 66 percent damage drop in uh in the in the total radius so it's going to be a bit bigger again the radius per rock and when they do hit it's 50 percent more damage so if two rocks now drop let's say that rocks each did 50 damage Two rocks now would be 75 each, which would be 150. And before, if it was 50 damage, three rocks would be 150. So you now only need to hit with two rocks, whereas before you would need to hit with three rocks to do the same damage. So if three rocks now were to be able to hit one target, that would be even more than it was in the original Mangonel patch. They do 12 damage each. Yeah, I was just using an example number, uh, Supara. Just using an example number. They'll probably still, I mean, they're weaker in general for sure, because mangonels have a homing missile projectile. Uh, in fact, better than homing missile, they do prediction. So against units that move predictably, mangonels can hit. If a unit suddenly changes direction, it hits less. People did figure this out. Pros in particular figured this out. So they're somewhat dodgeable, but usually not entirely, except by the fastest units. Uh, mangonels, the original mangonels were slaying knights, horsemen, basically anything. Now they're supposedly best against archers, crossbows, tower elephants, should be mentioned. Elephants are also classified as ranged, as are camel archers and horsemen archers, horse archers from Rus. And the attack radius is bigger. I'm curious to see how this will shape out. Definitely gonna try them again. And keep in mind that if this is now very strong for mangonels, that's going to be a buff to, to well, it's it's relatively a nerf to Chinese because they still had Nest of Bees. And it is relatively a buff to Abbasid and, and uh, of course, Mongols because those can build mangonels in the field. So they are most likely to have the most of them when they need it. Abbasid Dynasty. Oh, and it will likely be a nerf to the Sifts that rely the most on range units in general. Right now, the two Sifts that use range units the most are Rus with the Boar Strat into Mass Archers uh, and English with Longbowmen. So it would be a nerf to English and maybe Rus, which it wouldn't be a bad thing considering right now. Abbasid Dynasty. Research, reduced research time for House of Wisdom, first tier techs from 60 to 30 seconds because other Sifts get to use their landmark bonuses immediately well, obviously, Dynasty has to wait for the research to complete. I think that's a good idea. That seems nice. 
Holy Roman Empire. Holy Roman Empire will now start the game with the prelate and 100 gold less than they did previously. And Sifs generally start with 100 gold, so they will start with zero. So essentially, it pre-bought the prelate for you. In 90% of the games, Holy Roman Empire starts the game by training a prelate. So they're essentially gaining one free villager production time from this. There are currently no known meta builds for HRE where they skip the prelate. There's only a scout into prelate variation, but generally it's always the prelate. So yeah, that's literally one extra villager. And you're starting to inspire the villagers you have immediately rather than 20 seconds later, which is enormous. This is a really big buff. And the explanation is we did some modeling and found that HRE actually generate less resources than other sifs, leading to a weaker feudal age and fewer options. Removing the starting gold ensures they don't have a bonkers feudal age speed. Well, obviously you would have to remove it, otherwise it'd be a big buff. It does not ensure they don't have a bonkers feudal age speed. Oh, like it, it's still gonna be faster, right? Like before we started at 245, and now I imagine we could probably start it at 220. I'll try it out right away after these patch notes. But I, I see what they're saying, like they still, they didn't want it to be like a pure buff, just plus one prelate. And now bolster a competitive number of resources in Feudal Age. Wonder if now it's going to be a thing to uh, tower rush people with five villagers uh, and a prelate. <laughs> Probably not. No, I don't think so. Prelates no longer become stuck in inspiring and out of range target. Uh, I read this before. I thought they already were not doing this anymore. I thought this had already been fixed. Mongol outpost Yam Speed Ara now only applies to units within the radius and no longer lingers for 10 seconds. Uh, this is fantastic and something I've actually been asking for uh, since the start. Yam Ara was reduced from 20 seconds to 10 seconds. And the way I see it, it should not be, it should not be at all. It should not be uh, applying at all. Like if you're inside the outpost, you should be getting movement speed. And if you're not inside of it, then you should not. The lingering was really crazy for, uh, for buffs outside of the outpost area and a large part of why mongols are like so insanely good defensively not just aggressively but even defensively because you can just keep running with that movement speed now you'll need a few more outposts and you're still gonna have that bonus but no longer inside mongols still top sif together with english top two so any nerf will help a bit as well and also bring back respect to the good mongol players and not just you know those that use it for easy win farming Mongo Khan can no longer fire while on the move in Dark Ages. Funny that this is in capital letter, Khan Khan. This change is targeted at Khans following enemy scouts and killing their sheep. Yeah, oh, so annoying. It's compounded by the fact that Mongols are often able to apply early pressure to enemies who are then out of sheep and low on options. This change will retain the Khans fire while moving attack in all other ages. Maps, couple of map changes. Some board changes on Danube River. And what's next? And that's it. So it's a really small server side patch, but I think with a couple of cool changes, uh, Mangonels might be back. Abbasid are going to get a little buff. Holy Roman are going to get a considerable buff. And Mongols get a small nerf. I think it's good changes. Of course, we're always waiting for more. But this is what we have for now. So let's also uh, check out the new Holy Roman Empire starting build order with this uh, start gonna fire up hre let's say on hill and dale uh it can be anywhere let's let's just say dry arabia make it basic against easy ai don't want to stress myself too much teams together and start Okay, let's see. Uh, so if there is a map with deer inside your base, like Altai or 
hill and dale, you could immediately start your mill on the deer and the prelate will be there and that's gonna be pretty sick. Yo, thanks for the sub, man. Look at that, he starts inspiring immediately. The good old man. So that, that's gonna change the build quite a bit. Make sure that when you build your houses with someone that didn't already get inspired. Dude, this is really... Uh, it's a really big, big, really big buff. That's gonna also make double TC opener better. Yep, true. Yo, Lion Lad, thanks for the five gift subs. Does that mean you won your hearts game? <laughs> I bet you won. <laughs> Um, we could, we could Aachen, we could, we could not go Aachen. Do we Aachen? How much does that have left? 40. Hey, they came back down here. I sent them on this sheet. Look, this, go inside, out. They come out and they go to the carcass. Wow. Uh, okay, let's try again. That's funny. That's funny. I know why it's happening because they are on food duty, but they always prioritize carcasses over a live sheep. Where's my scout? Oh, there we go. What am I trying? Well, uh, there's just been a new patch, so Holy Roman Empire is gonna have different build orders. So I'm uh, trying some build orders. Uh, maybe now I can try how fast I can age up with the most standard possible opener. Let's let's try that. Make it the most standard. Everything back to food now. And then see how fast we can age up. That's the difference that I want to see. Because before, it would be pretty much 240 to 245. So let's see what it's going to be. No French nerf, but mangoes countering their crossbows might be enough to control them. Yeah, and 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 French uh, French knights are relatively weak against siege, right? Because they're so expensive, so they don't end up actually killing mangonels that quickly. They are the least likely to make spears and men at arms, which are. Um, more plentiful with the torch attack and then the horsemen are the highest torch damage and for the cheapest price they don't make those as much usually looks like we can age up at about 230 i would say And it's also because we have more gold than we need. Let's see how much we are carrying. Um, yeah, almost. Two thirty. Yeah. 230, not too bad. Yeah. With only three villages on gold, could have started earlier. Yeah, probably. Let's try it out. 215, probably. 
Yeah, we had 100 excess gold. Of course, if we want wheelbarrow, then it's okay to slow it down. Let's see. Gold on the top side, so we make the sheep here. We could get early wheelbarrow alongside it. Rabursk. Looks like he can aspire above and below the TC at this rate. Do the hotkeys still work the same as H2 or is that completely different? Um, quite different. H2 players have been lobbying for restorations in utility and we just had a hotkey patch that um, yeah. more closely resembles opening up some options that were there in H2. Though I haven't adapted to that yet. Okay, bring these back. The rest of the sheep don't matter for the build. Do I understand German? Yes, which makes Holy Roman Empire so much fun to play. Two twenty six. Two twenty six. Could have been faster if we get three on gold immediately. So let's say two twenty is very realistic. That's a pretty big buff. I'm gonna call it a how much second buff? Let's say 220 to 45. Yeah, 20 to 25 second buff. Which kind of makes sense, right? Because getting the default prelates saves you 20 seconds of villager production time. So you would say, okay, probably at least 20. But then there's also the immediate inspiration at the start of the game for the six villagers that you have. And then there's the fact that not just your first villager is faster by 20 seconds, but every villager is faster by 20 seconds. Or you can say, yeah, you start with plus one villager for all that time, yeah. Very interesting. But now he needs to, to get some wood to build a mill and then extra for wheelbarrow. Yeah, for sure. We are... Uh, I wish that he would ignore constructing villagers. Uh, when inspiring, or at least not prioritize those. So we need wheelbarrow and let's say one extra prelate. So we stop at 250 gold. Wheelbarrow coming. How much wood do we have? Oh, we have to cancel wheelbarrow first and do this first. Okay, we have enough gold. We go for our stone. Wheelbarrow. And Predit. Mm. 
Oh, scout walks right in. Just micro the prelate. Micro the prelate. Uh, you mean take him out of the Aachen, bring him to the stone for 10 seconds and then bring him back? I think it's good to have a second prelate here. Where would we want the second TC to be? Front deer, back deer. I mean, it depends what Sif you're up against as well. Probably the back deer would be safest, yeah. Yo, thanks for the sub. Go Serena. He needs to go here. He can go inside there. And no, none should be on here, actually. Barracks. Archery range. Ja, und? Drei tue ich also beide. And then, when can you castle? I think I saw a Viper castle at like 8.20 with this. I don't think I'm gonna make that because I got too much wood and too much gold. But the main conclusion, 2025 extra seconds bonus to your feudal is uh, really sick. Yeah, of course, if you skip wheelbarrow, you get second TC faster. Naturally, naturally. But in this way, you get more value out of it. So that's uh, really cool. I'm going to do some uh, extra testing with this and I'm going to try some Holy Roman Empire on the ladder. Let me know your findings, guys, with the new patch. If you've tested the new Manganel. Let's uh, let's go play some ranked Holy Roman Empire. Let's, let's go straight into it. <laughs> 